Hi, I'm Lydia. Um, today's my birthday. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No, 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 please. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. I did not expect that. I was just nervous, so I said a random thing. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm a set designer. Um, I'm a multi multidisciplinary artist. I make all sorts of like funny things, and I would characterize my work as being narrative building. For me, it's really important to be able to tell a story with the objects that I make, the spaces that I design. Um, yeah, that's sort of my work. Um, so today, instead of talking about set design, because um, I'm not going to talk about set design, I'm going to talk about I'm going to talk about my art. Um, so this is um, some of the art that I've made. It all started when I was nine. I well, I'm Chinese. My parents are from Hong Kong. Um, and when I was nine, which is year 2000, I guess. So now you know how old I am. Um, it was really popular to make these like little beaded Pikachus and like beaded dogs and silly things like that. And um, I was really into learning all these like little beaded techniques. Um, and then when I was 18, I was on the bus and I thought, wouldn't it be so cool if I could use my beads and make like a giant monster on my chest? So that was like, uh, before I moved to London, I kind of started experimenting with my beads again. And um, this is sort of the result of that. I just kept making bigger, and more elaborate beads, because I'm a maximalist, so more is not enough. Just needs to be more, bigger, better. Um, and so they became so big and so elaborate that I feel like they sort of expanded beyond like jewelry, and it became sort of like body sculpture. So you can see here, this is sort of what it's like. It's like an alien latched onto someone's face um, or on someone's neck. Um, for me, like cartoons, space, aliens, like all of those things are sort of like an inspiration that I've been thinking about and I care about for my whole life. Like, I'm turning 30 this year, but like I still watch Nickelodeon cartoons. I still like SpongeBob. I still like Fairly Odd Parent, which, by the way, is like the longest running cartoon on the on TV after Simpsons or something, which is pretty crazy. Um, but yeah, so like that's kind of the stuff that I think about and it's something that is sort of um, I something I want to explore for basically my entire life. Um, so this is the origins of my work. So this is like the beginning and this is me making my beads on my bed. Um, so the photos are like very glamorous and very refined, but then this is just me like on a dirty mattress like, you know, beading with all the beads on the thing. Um, but I think that's kind of um, how I would characterize my practice. Um, one part of me is like very into the fantasy and like where things are going and I can like push all my ideas and like think of the craziest stuff I could possibly make. But the other part of me is very firmly, um, firmly planted in logic and reality and systems and like sort of the meticulous details and planning and all the things that are um, that I need to think about and consider in order to make this thing happen. So um, the monsters are very sort of organic and the shapes are very soft. But then if you think about like the beaded technique, I have to think about like the squares, the hexagons, the pentagons and all the sort of mathematical shapes that form this shape. Um, so I think that's sort of how my work is like. I beat on my bed. It's just like chaotic, but then I'm also very considerate about the shapes and the techniques that I need in order to achieve my fantastical ideas. Um, this is me shooting uh, my beads in my studio. I think it's really important as a creative to think about, like, let your mind explore all the like fantastical ideas, but then, and, but you have to know when to be considered and when to be detail-oriented and when to be like logical. So I painted these random backgrounds just like with random wood that I found in my studio. So again, that's like just me being chaotic, me experimenting, me slapping some colors together and like just using my intuition to kind of like create just something that makes me feel good. But then you have to like think about um, the beads, like when I, when I think about the beads and I have to think about like the logic and how am I gonna suspend these beads in you know, the midair so I can shoot them. Like, so you have to 
be able to understand when to be intuitive and when to be creative and when to be, you know, pragmatic and logical and like very deeply rooted in reality. Um, this is my exhibition for Now Gallery. Um, like I was telling you before, space and aliens and cartoons is something that I'm exploring my whole life. So I started about out on the bus thinking it'd be really cool if I could have a monster on my chest and then it evolved into making bigger monsters, crazier monsters, and then I was like, where do these monsters live? They live in space, right? So let's make a big space immersive exhibition. So an opportunity came up from Now Gallery for me to design like an immersive quote unquote performance space. And I was like, you know what? This is the time for me to like create the most Lydia space ever. And so I proposed to create this crazy alien universe as sort of like um, the end to the pandemic kind of. So I envisioned that lockdown was sort of like you being stuck on a spaceship like an interstellar and then you kind of leave the spaceship and then you enter this crazy alien planet and everything is like all colorful and saccharine and saturated and like all new to you because you hadn't been outside in like a jillion years. Um, so this is my space, this is what it looks like on the outside. For me, um, as a maximalist, everything has to like, every space is sort of an opportunity for you to like design a thing, to consider a thing. So like, you know, the, from the walls to the ceiling, the floors, so the outside of this building, like all of it is considered as like shapes and it's like a very full on experience, which is I think characteristic of my work. Um, so yeah, this is the space. This is um, how the design began. So again, like I was saying before, you have to be like fantastical and push your ideas and like really sort of let yourself be free and expressive, but then you have to be like rooted in reality. And what is the reality? This space is 1,300 square feet. The ceiling height is seven meters tall. How am I gonna fit all these things in this space to scale so that it makes sense, it works as an exhibition, right? So how I did that was I used SketchUp to like draw a scale model of the actual gallery space. And then I, you know, being old school hand drawing, I printed it out and then I traced all my crazy monsters on it. And so again, this is the, the expressive part where I was just, you know, gonna make all the dumb shapes, whatever, haha, and do all the shapes. And then, but, 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 because I had already drawn the model in SketchUp, all my shapes, when I rescan them back into the computer and then I apply it back in SketchUp, will be to scale to the space. And so I will know exactly how these crazy, fantastical shapes fit into this 1,300 square foot space. Um, so this is the final SketchUp model. It looks insane. But what you saw here is basically 99% what and what was built at the very end. So I think it's important like to, to let yourself be crazy, but then also be like, this is what it's gonna be, we're gonna nail it, like no questions, right? Um, so this is the SketchUp model, we did it, it's a thing, looks great. Um, and then I also had to pitch this to the gallery, so like as much as they gave me this opportunity to like make a cool thing, they were also like, we have three other people, so. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta like blow our minds, right? I'm like, okay, 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 I'll blow your mind, I'll, I'll blow your mind, I got this, okay. So, had to do like the swanky renderings, you can do a little like digital walkthrough, you gotta like see how cool this space is gonna be in real life. I think um, a big part of being an artist is like knowing how to use visual communication to sell yourself, to like help people understand like just the, the ridiculous, chaotic craziness that's in your mind. You have to be able to sort of tell people actually it's crazy, but I can make it happen. It's gonna be really cool. You have to really convince people. And so um, making these digital renderings and making this digital walkthrough kind of help people understand, um, just like wrap their heads around like what the design is gonna be like and what it is that you're gonna make for them. So that's the entrance, and then this is the exhibition. This is one of the monsters that I created in the space, and it's inspired by um, one of the beaded monsters that you saw in the first slide with like the face and the crazy mouth and the tongue. Um, so then, after, after I designed this and they approved me and they told me how much they love me, um, I have to think about how I can materialize this crazy design into like the actual exhibition. So again, back to the logic, the system, you know, the pragmatism of my work. I went, um, because I had drawn out the design in SketchUp, everything is to scale, measured to the T, you know, what it's gonna be, right? So I took all of the three dimensional shapes and then I had to flatten them out into um, these 
giant three meter by 1.2 meter um, MDF sheets and then I lay them out as like a graphic design and then they get sent into a CNC machine which is like this computer machine that cuts out um, your shapes following your vector drawings. But then what's so great about this is like because it's, everything is to scale, all the shapes that come out are exactly the same size as what it is in the model. So what you see is what you get. Everything is like a done deal accuracy, right? So um, these are the shapes um, that came out from the CNC machine. So again, this is the chaos of my studio. All the shapes are just like smashed around everywhere. And then I'm like, okay, I got to organize it, have to paint it. And then, um, so like knowing when to be accurate, which is like to make sure that the design is to a T what you get, and then knowing when to be crazy, which is like I can just throw this, the shapes around everywhere, it's not a big deal, and then let them sort of speak to me, and I like paint them and see how the colors work, and you know like let my intuition sort of like drive um, the final result. So you see here, thousands of shapes. I think I painted like a total of like 1,300 shapes with the help of my father and my friends and my best friend, they all came and helped me paint shapes. So we're painting all these crazy shapes and they're just like stacked, just chaotic. And then um, I booked a truck and we like shipped it all to the gallery. Um, but then, so like this is all the intuition, this is all the craziness, this is all the chaos, right? But then after the chaos, we go back to the gallery and then again, we have to be, be pragmatic, right? All the shapes, they stack up together. How do they stack up? How do they line up? You have to organize the shapes in a way that like you know which ones are gonna hang first, which ones are gonna hang second, you know, so that you can again find some kind of system to understand these 1,300 just random circles and how are they gonna become this monster that I had originally designed. So, this is the process of hanging these shapes. Again, pragmatism, right? MDF is heavy, okay? I don't know if you know, like you lift an Ikea shelf, that shit's heavy, right? So like you don't want like that stuff suspended like three meters above the ground and then like it falls on someone's head, you know? I don't wanna get sued, I'm good. Um, so you have to calculate the surface area of the MDF and then calculate the density and then calculate how much that individual piece is gonna weigh. And then you have to think about, um, how much each clip and airplane cable can, you know, like how much weight each can take, and then you have to figure out how many airplane cables each piece needs. So you have to be like crazy and free and like, but then you have to use pragmatism and physics and reality to be able to like, you know, materialize your design. Um, so that's a big part of my job, my career. What I think about is how can I, when to be crazy and when to be intuitive and when to just like let myself be expressive and when to be pragmatic and understand physics and understand, you know, the boundaries of the universe essentially. Um, so this is the, like, these are the crazy shapes that I've been exploring. This is the design that I've made and this is sort of like the exhibition that I did that ended in the beginning of March. I don't know if you guys saw it, it was fun. It's a nice space. Very popular with children, by the way. I think maybe my aesthetic just leans, lends itself to being popular with children. I don't know. Um, but these are some of the stickers that I designed for the exhibition. I think one of the things that I really wanted to talk about today, besides the fact that like you can probably make some cool shit like just randomly in your bedroom and you don't have to be like have a lot of money or you know be super important or anything and just make cool stuff is that like if you have one idea um it can be something really simple you can explore that and have various different iterations and develop it through your entire life and that's something that i think um really worked for me i really like aliens i really like monsters i really like sort of like this idea of like grotesque things and then really cute things and then kind of like smashing them together and creating these like cute but also kind of scary looking ish monsters um so it started off as beaded like shapes, beaded sculptures, it turned into some crazy immersive exhibition and now I'm making these stickers and who knows, like maybe it'll be t-shirts, maybe I'll make jewelry, maybe it'll be like, you know, carpets, maybe, you know, like for me it's about sort of like taking my design, creating as many iterations of it, developing it through my entire life and creating sort of like objects and like products and things that like you know, anyone can buy and like participate in and embody and enjoy and it can bring like happiness and like pleasure to just like, you know, all sorts of different people. So yeah, that's me, that's my work. Thanks. <laughs>